Welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Richard Courtright, a Managing Director in the Corporate and Government Ratings Group. One of the real standout features of today's power markets, and a profound feature it is, is the remarkably low price of natural gas, the lowest, in fact, in a decade. One very significant consequence of low gas prices lies in the fact that in most power markets around the country, it's a gas-fired generator that sets the marginal wholesale price for power in the respective market. In a recent report entitled, What's Driving the U.S. Merchant Power Sector's Credit Outlook for 2012, Standard & Poor's observed that the disproportionate impact of sharply lower natural gas prices continues to weigh on power prices. In fact, power prices in the U.S. have declined by over 50 percent on average since early 2008. To discuss this phenomenon and what these suppressed prices might mean for the creditworthiness of the unregulated power generation sector, I am joined by the author of that report, Anish Prabhu, a director in our Utilities and Infrastructure Group. So, Anish, let's, let's start um, with uh, the commodity prices generally and the fact that they, as well as gas prices, have been low for quite a while now. So what is, um, what's different this time? What are the characteristics of the environment today that make this environment a bit different? Well, there are a couple of facts that, um, factors which are unusual. First, the marginal cost of drilling gas is still trending down, believe it or not. Fayetteville and Marcellus fields are at about four bucks, you know, less the cost of acreage, uh, which, which is unusual because current prices are at 2.7. So that would suggest that the marginal cost uh, is, is higher than uh, what gas is selling for at the moment. But the plain fact is producers do not uh, uh, cut back on flowing gas. What they will do is over time cut back on wells that are drilled but, not uncom but uncomplete. Uh, and that's really to do with capital spending. So there you can't really expect any cuts in s from the supply side. It has to come really from the demand side that will balance out the gas supply. Uh, so for example, there are two three things that are still happening. L um, gas producers are moving to a liquid place, which means NGLs and oil. But a, a byproduct of that is also gas. So gas is still flowing. Uh, it's also a milder winter. And um, finally, you know, it's been a very good hydro year. All of this means that storage levels are increasing, so we expect prompt gas, that's gas in 2012, to even trend below 2.5, dollars $2 But what makes it specifically unusual is till now, the gas curve has been in steep contango, has had been, which means that even if the prompt year is, is depressed significantly, the forward years have done pretty well. As recently as January of 2010, two years, two years ago, gas in 2014 was at seven bucks. Now with Casper stayed and no cold plant retirement is expected at least until 2014, the only way that demand can rise is through coal to gas switching. And that's not probably going to happen to the level expected. In some places you can't have that because gas, there's just no gas fired uh, availability, gas fired generation availability. So what's happening is that the forward curve has collapsed quite a lot. And that's unusual for instance 2014 is at about four and a quarter dollars at the moment. Okay. So prices aren't going anywhere. They're not, they're not going to be increasing. So if we look at the power sector, then the, um, the unregulated power sector, you split into two, the non-investment grades and the investment grades. If you look at the first, um, you know, the non-investment grade, the independent power producers, what do gas prices at these remarkably low levels imply for the credit worthiness of these, of these entities? Well, we've commented about the, the non-investment uh, grade credits for some time because these, these um, credits typically don't hedge long term for the most part. And also they don't have the most efficient fleets. You know, for want of a better word, they have the kind of asset which shut down first. Uh, this sector has been on a negative outlook for, for a while except for Calpine, which is predominantly gas-based and its capacity factors are increasing. All others are on a negative outlook. And they have you know, individual issues also. For example, EME has um, refin energy. addition mission right. energy, has refinancing issues in terms of they have a, a revolver due in June 2012 and a senior unsecured note due in 2013. So until they refin refinance that, they have those kind of issues apart from the fact that they don't hedge very long term. Uh, Genon, which is the combination of Mirant and uh, RRI, um, has issues of, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, 
uh, inefficient uh, coal units subject to Casper um, Casper related shutouts or Max related uh, shutouts. Casper has been stayed for a while, so they do have some time, but essentially uh, they are also are facing those kind of issues. So apart from Calpine, as I mentioned, most of these credits are, are facing um, short-term concerns simply because they don't hedge very long-term. All right. Okay. Turning to the investment grade side. Why would they not be subject to the same kinds of influences that the non-investment grade entities are? Yeah, this is where it gets interesting. Up until now, um, the investment grade diversified firms used to rateably head their, their production. And some examples of those would be? Would be the PACGs, the Exelons, the PPLs, if you will. Now, so far that strategy has worked because as I mentioned, the, the gas curve had been in contango and even if immediate prices collapse in the prompt year, you are highly hedged. But rateable hedging insulates you from the market and then isolate the risk of, of your margin exposure. And now with the forward, especially in 2014 and 15, significantly depressed, most of these companies which had hedged their 2010, 11, 12 generation at about when gas prices were at seven bucks in the forward market, now face, are faced with uh, a 2014 curve at, at four and a half bucks. Now, even if all is equal, we do expect that there will be some upward momentum in gas because we expect coal plant, plant retirements to start. And once coal plants start retiring, there will be some gas demand, or some re gas response. But the problem for them is that in the rateable hedging exercise, they have to be hedging 2014 right now. Otherwise, they're taking a directional bet and keeping their generation exposed to the merchant markets. And now they have a four and a half dollar curve, so they face a significantly backwarded EBITDA, a earnings cliff, if you will. And that's what they have to address. Now they do have time, up to two years, to correct their balance sheet, you know, maybe pay down debt. But that, if, if that curve does not really um, has much of a resurgence, you do see a significant earning profile drop off, and that will be their concern. Uh, what it might mean for credit, we will start looking at potentially negative outlooks in late 2012 to early 2013, and potentially if the gas curve doesn't uh, respond and they don't do anything to their balance sheets in terms of deleveraging, you know, rating actions can fall. Okay, so some pretty significant challenges for the merchant power sector as you look out a couple years over which the companies really have very limited control. Okay, good. Great. Thanks, Anish, and thank you for tuning in.